morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, the iPad is real. I'm just showing it, so it's, it's there and it's shiny. And secondly, for those that might not win the iPad, um, we're giving away T-shirts. So if you want a T-shirt, so that has the benefit I have, don't have to carry it home, um, come by our booth and we'll be really glad to hand out one to you. Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me. First of all, uh, let me say thank you to the uh, great organization of this event. I think we're all very glad to be here and Public Interest Registry is proud actually to, to be a sponsor here. Um, with that being said, and uh, I'd like to go through my details, but first of all, let me introduce myself to you. Um, as said, I'm Uli Retzlaff, and Public Interest Registry is the operator of .org, the top level domain name, and you might be already using our one of our top level domain names, such as wikipedia.org. I'm sure there is a wwf.org out there somewhere. Um, and there are many domain names that we're operating. And we're doing this also as a non-for-profit. Non so we are part of the non-for-profit community, and we are a proud part of it. And that partly is why we are here today. Um, because we are part of the internet, right? We have been um, basically created in 1985 with the TLD.org. And um, if we think about 985 and travel a bit back in time, we, we think about change and what happened. And if you look at that, that screen, I mean, some of you might remember that, right? It's the, it's the Walkman, which got replaced by an iPhone or an iPod or something else, an MP3 player just recently. Um, and there were other things that happened in 1985. We had the PC entering the workspace. I'm sure every, you know, mobile phone now can do more than that machine over there. Um, I still think I have something like that in my cellar. I don't, I got, I, I don't know why I keep it, but it's still there. Um, getting online was really hard. Um, anybody here who, who knows what this is? Yes, thank you. I, just, I like people that say that's an acoustic coupler, and it was the first way to get online. I, I remember my excitement when I, when I had contact to the outside world, when something actually happened with the computer. It really got me like, excited. Um, and now, where are we? I mean, we have over 2 billion internet users. We have over 250 million registered domain names globally. Uh, it's truly an amazing success story, the way that we all connect with each other. You know, having a day without the internet, for me, impossible. I'm, I freak out if, if a hotel somewhere tells me uh, there is no online access, there is no wireless. I really, that's not a good day for me. Um, maybe it's also worrying, but it's like that, right? And on top of all the domain names and the websites that, that we could produce, um, we have social media, we have Facebook, we connect via real life uh, Twitter tweets, um, we talk to people via, via YouTube, um, it, we, we have our own little TV stations in our, in, our, in our living rooms. It's become truly an amazing thing for everybody. And still, remember, a website and a domain name that you have, your platform is still relevant because it remains the most trusted source that you have uh, that people have online. We have done a survey just recently and it showed that um, in times of crisis, people f still find organizations, websites, the most trusted source online. So what you do online with your website is still very, very important. And don't stop doing this. And let, let's have a look at this. So these were the original top level domain names. Gov, Net, Mill, Org, Edo. Um, just a little bit of activity. Hand, uh, hands up for those people who have one of those top-level domain names. Who? Okay. See, I know there are always a couple. So, but you might say, well, org, yeah, dot com, yeah, good. But I am an fi. I am a dot se. I am a dot hk. I'm, you know, I am more a country top-level domain name because this is where my community lives, and so the world introduced also, you know, these top-level domain names. And I can, which is the governing body for all of what, what I do personally. Uh, also introduced over the years a couple of other things like .asia, .info, .jobs to make it a bit more relevant. But again, hands up for those people who really identify with the top level domain names that they own. One, two, good. Maybe they were over there some more. And, that, and that's great. But you see, it's not a big reaction. And I can thought about this. And I can thought, hmm, you know what? Um, we have to make top level domain names a little bit more relevant for people. 
and they have come up a couple of years ago with a plan to introduce more freedom to this market, uh, to introduce more top-level domain names. And as a registry, you were able to apply and say, well, I have a great idea, and um, let's, get, uh, you know, let's get words out there that are meaningful to people. And we've, well, there are 1,408 new top-level domain names. It's, it's going to be a big choice for all of you. Um, and here are some of the choices that you, that you might have for yourself. Um, you can be dot app. You can be dot restaurant if you want to be. Um, you can be something that has a very generic term to it. It might make sense to be dot shop if you are one. If you are a city or if you're a taxi driver in, in Basel or a city driver in, in London. You know, you want to have taxi dot London. Great. Still resonates with you. Not so sure. You can be a brand. Well, you know, you can be dot apple and you might want to create your own little walled garden online. You want to make sure that your customers stay within your little world. Dot Facebook will be there, there I'm sure. Um, dot IBM, dot Visa, dot Airbus, dot Nike. Still, that's maybe for the big NGOs out there. WWF might consider this some sometime soon. Um, if you are a part of the community, there are also community TLDs, things like dot Catholic, things like dot, dot CPA, um, that will resonate to a specific group and applicants for these rounds had to show that they had community support. And you already notice I've sneaked in dot NGO already there because we had uh, support from, from the NGO community. And last but not least, um, there is something called internationalized domain names. It's like domain names in local script. So if you just imagine if you're in, in, in India, your, uh, your, your keyboard will look very different from what we use on a daily basis. Uh, they don't type in our script. Chinese don't type in our script. So, we, so ICANN has allowed, finally, in our ways for those people to use their character set also online. So we see more diversity there. It's becoming a more, you know, a more vibrant community and more targeted community online. So that's the question that you have. So why am I listening to this, okay? Here is a domain name, it's techie, somebody in IT might be doing it, or yeah, we have something, we have an email, I use Gmail, I use whatever, you know, I don't really care. Um, and we, as public interest registry, you know, we asked the question, so how can we make this thing relevant to the people that are near and dear to our heart? In our current registration database, we have about, uh, we have a lot, we have more, over 10 million registered domain names under .org, mo mo mostly, um, those domain names come from an area um, that is non-profit sector, from people that have a passion, that have a mission, that have a cause, that, you know, are like us here in this room. Um, but still, you know, is it really relevant? So we thought, hmm, we could make it better. We have a better idea. But let's listen to the people first. And what we did is we reached out. We traveled the world and, and, and listened to NGOs in Bangladesh. We listened to uh, people in, in uh, to grassroots in, in, in Brazil. We talked to people in Canada. Uh, name it, we were there. It was a very interesting and long journey to understand what you, know, you wanted, uh, you as a community. And uh, here's what we came up with. Well, what you came up with. You had like four basic needs when we were talking about domain names. First one is, I want a relevant domain name. So you want a domain name that is meaningful. Now, if you're currently looking for a domain name, chances that your term is taken is quite big. You can't be, you don't have a short domain name anymore available. I mean, just imagine .com is so big, everything is taken. You have to hyphenate uh, your domain name, you have to put a number to it, and you'll see the results every day, and they make it very hard to type. So a namespace that is open, that gives you availability, number one. Number two is you want to have access to resources. I mean, yes, you are an NGO and you need donors, right? You want to drive money to your website, a website that you might not have time to manage properly and, and get up in the, in the Google searches and, and in results. You know, it's, it's a hard effort. So get donors to my site, get donors to me as an organization, the other key thing that we heard. You wanted to connect. You want to make sure that people find you. I mean, yesterday I recall conversations here. That people said one of the key things in this community is we have to collaborate better. We have to find ways to find each other. How do I know if there's somebody out there dealing with water um, and building wells, for example? I can do this very well. We've done it. We had a great project in, in Sudan, but maybe you know we have we want to do some learnings to replicate that process in South Africa or, or wherever. 
And how do you find these people? Currently, there is no global place where you can find all your NGO colleagues from around the world that do the same passionate and great work. There is nothing. So, and of course, you know, be found, of course, therefore was the last thing. Give me, a, give me a way to easily show who I am out there. So, as a domain name registry, this is what we came up with. Um, we are producing, or we will make available, uh, you can't really produce a domain name, I think. Um, will we make available a top-level domain name that's ex exclusive to the NGO community? That means you, as, as a true NGO, can only register that top-level domain name. So you, we validate that. So um, main goal here is, of course, make it relevant. And secondly, keeping the bad actors out. We don't want people that just pop up, create an NGO domain name, and collect money during a time of crisis or a catastrophe. Right? You want to be in good company. So in order to do this, we have created a database. Um, we have created a process that when you apply for the domain name, um, makes sure that uh, you are true who, who you, that, that you are who you say you are. And that can be proved in many different ways depending on the country that you're coming from because we realize it's sometimes hard to understand is this real or not. Um, that's the first thing. Um, we also, we also provide you with uh, a global uh, domain name, meaning we give you two domain names, .ngo and .ong. And ONG is the Romans character set alternative. So let me say it in my non-existing Spanish, organización non-governmental. I think that sounds very passionate, right? Uh, this is what, what we are all about. So we are, so you get that both, and you truly have already a, a, a global connection. Um, the other thing is we want to make sure that um, people know um, that it's one company. So I'll give you the example. Water.ngo has to be the same as water.ong. Because if it's two different companies, there's, there's, there's confusion. Who is the real one now? So it's both. So it's one. Um, one price, two domain names, very simple. Now that's the basic thing that, that we do from a domain name perspective. But of course, I wouldn't be here with just another domain name, right? So we give you a little bit more. Um, we give you a searchable directory. You can be found by your name, by your cause, by the region that you're operating in. Right? It's searchable. You'll be part of that directory. People find you. There will be maps that can locate the, the NGOs nearest to you. It, it's available to the world. People can see that. Um, of course, it's a multimedia platform. So when you currently have struggled with the fact that, um, yeah, we have a great website, but I, actually my friends can't see it on the iPhone or on the whatever, Samsung smartphone. Um, they can't see it because it doesn't really fit the screen. We've got great pictures and videos, but it doesn't, doesn't work. It's there, right? And we do that with a profile page that you set up on the system. And the benefit of the profile page, if you are a larger organization, might not be there because you think, wow, we have an awesome website. But think about all the grassroots. Think about all the small organizations that don't have the technology uh, knowledge, that don't have the time or the resource to do that. You just, in that portal and that profile page, you will just, it provides with a couple of information, a couple of pictures if you want to, a video, you know, and, and up and, and you upload it and you're up and, and ready to go. And that's key because that's the hurdle of being seen right now. We don't have anybody that creates a website in potentially some organizations. That's what we're doing. But we thought, okay, that's not meeting all the criteria. The last one is money, right? Well, we, again, yesterday we heard money is not evil, right? Money is not evil. Where there's no money, there is no mission. Unfortunately, you know, it all drives it. Um, so you, uh, in many cases, you can, you know, you can collect your money. You can, you can reach out to your donors that you know right now. But if your cause is really appealing, you might, you know, also um, get my, you know, microcredits, for example, or you also, you know, want to have a donation platform. But how hard is that to set it up? And we'll provide you on the profile page with a simple donation tool that just activate and, it, and if somebody likes your cause, they can directly then and there send the money to your organization. I think that's a key thing. Um, and I hope that that solves some of the issues um, that we addressed, uh, that, that I just mentioned. So it's, we think it's simple. You find your domain name, you upload your credibility or your credentials and your um, documents that, that go with it, very, very simple, very easy. And then you create your profile page. And then you are found online and be part of this directory. Very, very simple. Because we all know 
It has to be fast, it has to be easy, so otherwise people won't be able to do it, right? And we address people all over the world. Um, when, how, well, how, but when does it really happen? And it'll happen this summer. We're coming uh, in the third quarter of this year. I'm trying to be a bit vague here. I'm pointing to September um, with a sunrise period um, in summer that is for trademark owners. So if you're a larger organization, again, using the example uh, of Greenpeace or WWF, and I'm sure these people have uh, a trademark for their logo. So if you have one, you have, in the ICANN process, um, you have first rights. So you, so you go in there and say, okay, I have a trademark, and I want to reserve my name. That's a 30-day sunrise period, and after that is closed, the domain name will be generally available to all the NGOs. And that will also happen, again, it's an easy, it's easy process. If you've never heard about a domain name, you go to your, what we call a registrar, a company like GoDaddy, Askio, uh, One and One, um, One, Two, Three, Reg in the UK. You go to these people and you say, I want that domain name, and you'll be up, up, up and running in no time. Very, very simple. And from an Outlook perspective, um, we know that for this product, it'll be very important to get a lot of people in, so it makes sense, right? It doesn't help you if, if you're in directory with five people. So we are, I'm saying, I'm uh, touring the world, talking to, talking to NGOs, creating awareness. We think that the tool becomes relevant with about 500,000 participants, that's our immediate target. Um, we, th we hope for a lot more, um, because if you think about the numbers, there are 10 million, minimum 10 million uh, NGOs out there globally. Um, come from Germany, 800,000, France, 800,000, um, give you a number from outside our European world. Um, India, 3.3 million NGOs out there. And it's an ever-growing number. So the 10 million that I'm stating here is a very conservative number. And getting all these people together and making you know, ourselves visible in the specific sector to our, our counterparts, I think, um, would really work well if people participate. And uh, let me underline this point again. We are non for profit as well. We are part of this community. We don't do this you know, for the money. So we are driven by a bigger cause. Um, because otherwise, we could have applied for maybe a more commercial term. And we just do NGO and ONG and a couple of alliterations in, in other languages of .org. So I hope that convinces you and you get excited. And because I know, I know it's hard, right? It's many speeches happening every day, many people talk and uh, I, I know, I've been there, I sit, in, I sit in forums like this all the time, so what you do is you go on globalngo.org and you submit an expression of interest and say, you know what, when you're going live, remind me. We're not spamming you, we just send you a reminder, say, hey, you, you, you thought this is a good thing, join us and we'll be very happy to. Um, in the meantime, we entertain you with a shiny outfit. <laughs> Um, with that being said, again, thank you very much for, to the organizers. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you, Marcus, uh, Tom, uh, I've been fantastic. I hope you have another great day. And uh, I hope just to see you during the lunch break. Join us, come over, we're happy to see you. Thank you very much. Yeah.